Good morning and welcome to our webinar. I, my name is Maria Guerra Lopasic. I'm the Commissioner of the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. I'm here today with Emilia Demenko, the President and CEO of the Women's Business Development Center. They are with us at the Solution Station every first and third Thursday uh, in room 805 of City Hall, providing small businesses a tremendous uh, level of assistance. Welcome, Emilia. Well, thank you, Commissioner, for having me. Absolutely. So tell us what the Women's Business Development Center is. Well, we're a nonprofit, and the category that we fit in is we're an economic development organization. What that means is it's about jobs. So we, our mission is economic independence through entrepreneurship, and we help businesses not just start, and, and but we help them grow. So um, we, we have a huge operation here in Chicago, and we view City Hall as a satellite office. Yes, and we're very happy to have you. We get a lot of great feedback about the assistance that you provide. So what kinds of assistance do you provide uh, uh, businesses, and at what level would you prefer that they come to you, you know, someone uh, with an idea or someone who's, you know, kind of put together a little bit better of a plan or when the plan is a little bit further cooked? What level do you think that, uh, or, or what, first, what resources um, do you provide and then, you know, what's most helpful for you? First of all, people should come to the center regardless of what stage they're in okay. because we are equipped, having been doing this for 30 years, we're equipped to handle both. But the needs of a startup and emerging business is very, very different than the needs of an established business. Mm -hmm. When you talk about established businesses, it's about capacity building, um, it's about contracts, it's about uh, huge amounts of capital to fuel those contracts. With startup and emerging businesses, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's like, what paperwork do they need? They need to know what the IRS expects. They need to know what legal documentation they need. So the center is equipped with both staff as well as with subject matter experts to provide that type of support. And we collaborate with other community organizations. And we also collaborate with the for-profit world. The support that we're given allows us to provide access to our clients, to uh, traditional providers of capital, as well as other subject matter experts. And so it sounds like you do a, a wide breadth of service uh, for these small businesses. Um, it sounds expensive. How much do you charge your clients? Well, we're a nonprofit and we're supported by a, a third of our funding comes from government entities, a third from corporations and foundations, and a third from certification fees that we um, uh, charge. But 95% of all of our services are free. And, and when we do charge, it's just a small amount, mm -hmm. usually $10, $15. Um, it helps with attendance. When people uh, <laughs> spend $10, $15, they usually Don't be there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, it's great to hear that the um, services mostly are free. Uh, how do you recruit uh, small businesses? How do you get people through the door? Well, um, we do a lot of outreach mm -hmm. and the solution station. Mm -hmm. uh, people come uh, that are our citizens of our great city. They come to the solution station and they figure out what's available throughout the city. So that's one avenue. But we use every channel that's available mm -hmm. for outreach. Um, we use social media a lot. We have great relationships with the media, um, all the great newspapers we have in town. Um, we do a lot. We have a great database that we've built over 30 years, and we do a lot of outreach. So, um, and frankly, uh, referrals. We get a lot of referrals from people that have utilized the services of the center, as well as community partners. Now, so the name of your organization implies that women um, are only invited. Is that true, or do you also help uh, uh, male-led businesses? So um, the center does target women. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is, um, e even today, there isn't sufficient uh, diversification and equity mm -hmm. in the distribution of capital and contracts. So that is... Who we target. However, we because of the expertise we have, mm -hmm. we attract 
a, everybody in our community. So 18% right. of those that we serve overall are male, but for something like our Procurement Technical Assistance Center, mm -hmm. it's over 30% male. We also target veterans and have. It started during the recession, and we're a veterans business outreach center, and 80% of the military, of course, is male. Mm -hmm. So for our veterans program, mm -hmm. um, almost 50% of those that we serve are, are male. But, wow. but we welcome everyone. Um, two other statistics uh, that you might have interest in is 60% of our clients come from low to moderate income communities mm -hmm. and we work very very hard to make sure that we provide the services centrally through um, uh, doing a lot of webinars like this one mm -hmm. uh, we have online on-demand courses but as important we as I said earlier we collaborate with a lot of other community organizations and bring our services in the various communities of the city Great, and so you also do advocacy. You mentioned contracts and certification. So you also advocate for um, uh, bringing greater participation of women-owned businesses into government contracts, uh, private sector contracts, is that? Yes, we, um, we do it in a variety of ways. One is we're very, we participate mm -hmm. in uh, councils, committees. Um, we write a lot of op-eds. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, do support uh, corporations that distribute their business to women and minority owned businesses mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact as it relates to women owned businesses we are part of the Women's Business Enterprise National Council mm -hmm. and we which is the largest third party certifier in the United States and we certify not just in Illinois mm -hmm. but we certify in eight other states and that is an, uh, and through that uh, organization we do a lot of advocacy also. Yeah, that's impressive. That's, you know, bringing folks in, getting them into business, and then opening up doors for them to actually do business. That's a, a wide array of things that you guys do. So tell me about the uh, resources on your website. You were talking about the online on-demand webinars. What else can people find on your website by way of resource? So on our website, we try to provide a lot of information about what's available through the center as well as other organizations. We promote things that the city does through our mm -hmm. website. Um, we also have any webinar, uh, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. we have any web webinar we've given in English and in Spanish um, is available. Um, we also developed over the last five years an online on-demand learning platform. Mm -hmm. There are all the 101 classes like Business Finance 101. Mm -hmm. Um, and anything that uh, someone that's thinking about starting a business, they're going to have to know some basic things. They're going to have to have some basic vocabulary. And one way to prepare them to have a conversation at the solution station or with the Women's Business Development Center is to go to the website and take advantage of these uh, courses because you can take, you know, most people that are starting a business have a day job. Right. And, you know, and, and for those that we serve, um, with, that we target women, many of them are heads of households, mm -hmm. many of them have children. So they have to go to their day job, they have to go home and take care of their families, they have to then, then at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, they have a few extra minutes. And with our platform, they can use that time to take some quick classes that help help stimulate thought and think about, do I really want to start a business? Right. Well, and that's very important, um, your mention of the right vocabulary, because when you seek especially capital financing for your business, you want to convey that you know what you're talking about and speak the same language with, you know, the folks you're seeking assistance from. So we, we do two things. Number one, we provide technical assistance, mm -hmm. and we do that for general business, for mm -hmm. general business acumen, but we also have a segment of our staff that have financial acumen. And mm -hmm. what we've done for a number of years, and part of the reason we can do, one of the things we're doing is because of the generosity of the city of Chicago to invest in us so that we can invest in the citizens of Chicago mm -hmm. by providing us with money to lend. During the worst of the recession, 
Um, we, the Women's Business Development Center, along with Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, along with Axion, because of an alliance that we had with the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. we were able to deal with the financial crisis that we were in. And while we couldn't help everyone, we helped as many people a as we could with direct lending mm -hmm. when the financial institutions um, had to take a step back. But what we do um, is we use the money that we have when we can't find traditional financing mm -hmm. or an alternative provider of capital. and But what we do to help our clients is we help them prepare for those meetings. We help mm -hmm. them with their business plan. We help them with their projections because you can't go into a bank and ask for money without having one, a business plan, and two, um, financial projections so the bank knows what you're anticipating to create and how that's going to manifest itself in, in uh, actual numbers. And more importantly, how they're going to get their money yeah, back. Very important, <laughs> very important. And yeah, and so you mentioned, um, you were talking about the microloan program. And so the city created the um, revolving uh, fund, $2 million that we uh, work with the three partners. Um, how is that program going thus far with the um, Women's Business Development Center? Well, um, there are lots of success stories. Um, and of course, we do what the traditional banks don't do. So you have a couple of losses here and there, but right. you have so many successes mm -hmm. that it's, it's worth it. Um, the one story I'm thinking of is a story from the Solution Station. Mm -hmm. One of my colleagues is at the Solution Station, and this is uh, about two years ago, but the reason I'm telling you a two-year-old story mm -hmm. is there's a recent part to that story. Two years ago, uh, a woman was thinking of starting a business in Ravenswood. She needed capital. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that capital was to start a restaurant. And um, we at the Women's Business Development Center, because of the investment the city of Chicago had made, were able to make that loan. Here we are, the business is doing well. Great. And here we are two years later, and um, she's expanding, and we did the second loan. She paid the first loan, we're doing the second loan to uh, fuel that expansion. That is really a tremendous success story because not just one loan, but two loans, and, and that's really well, helpful. Well, we until we transition her to a traditional provider of capital because that's in her business's best interest. So, right. But it's a great story. It is, indeed. Thanks for sharing that. So is there a particular sector that the Women's Business Development Center has a particular expertise in or that you concentrate in or that you've just seen a trend you know, based on who your clientele is? So um, our clients mm -hmm. reflect the diversity that we have in the industries that we serve. Um, when I'm thinking of the solution station, um, what we see are a lot of professional services, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants and food, mm -hmm. construction, and an expertise we have in particular is childcare. Uh, over 17 years, 17 years ago, um, the availability of child care for women to work, mm -hmm. uh, there weren't too many options, there weren't too many affordable, there weren't, right. there weren't options, leave alone affordable options. Right. And um, the center invested in helping women start home-based as well as center-based um, child care centers. And not only did we focus on opening the business, but we worked collaboratively mm -hmm. to make sure that the quality was there and the safety was there. Mm -hmm. um, and here we are today, there's two things that have happened. Number one, women have formed businesses to, in their homes mm -hmm. so they can support their families and help other families uh, support their families. And a lot of those businesses have become center-based businesses. So, I mean, when you think of the economic impact of that, mm -hmm. it, it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and that is truly very important today, more so than 17, 18 years ago, because, as I said, over 50% of all households today are run by women over the age of 18 many of which have children, mm -hmm. and uh, many of those women are, are single women, mm -hmm. and they have to work, there's no choice. But even in, uh, when there's a couple, mm -hmm. uh, the cost of living today is such that everybody's gotta work. So 
you know, when you can go to work and you don't have to worry? I mean, you know. Yes. No, as you a mother know. of a one and two year old, this is uh, yeah. ringing very true to my ears here in terms of the child care and the difficulties that, uh, you know, working mothers face. But and, and it's a great uh, way to, as you're saying, it's a it, it's it's double edged. You're helping the woman business owner and you're helping the woman client mother clientele so that they can go to work, which is with peace of mind, with peace which of is mind. so important. Yes. Yeah. So it's great to hear that not only do you um, assist in, you know, what would be more of a traditional, uh, you know, female headed business such as like a daycare, uh, but also, you know, you mentioned construction. Uh, you know, do you see a lot of women wanting to get into engineering, construction? Because I know there's a lot of emphasis on STEM and getting more women into these fields that traditionally had lower, um, you know, female participation. We see participation in every element. And, you know, there's the Federation of Women Contractors right here in Chicago that mm -hmm. we work very collaboratively with. And women support that that biz that industry in multiple ways mm -hmm. from design to architecture to the electrician the lighting um, the digging uh, of the trenches I mean <laughs> we see women business wow. owners in every aspect of mm -hmm. construction and what's interesting to me mm -hmm. when you look at entrepreneurs when people think of entrepreneurs sometimes they think of uh, uh, Steve Jobs Sometimes they think of Mark Zuckerberg. When people start businesses, yes, mm -hmm. sometimes they have this fabulous idea, mm -hmm. but many times it stems from need. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, a person has some ins loses their job. Um, mm -hmm. A person um, has um, uh, the one of the people in the family has gotten sick, um, and you see these wonderful success stories. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of Arrow Messenger, Phyllis Applebaum started that business many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And how she started, she was driving a cab, needed to make more, she had her child on the seat next to her. <laughs> she needed to um, make a little bit more money, so she started delivering things in, with her cab service. Mm -hmm. And that turned into Arrow Messenger. Uh, you've got Marcia Serling of United Scrap Metal. She was trying to figure out how am I gonna earn uh, mm -hmm. more money here and she saw a, a metal scrap truck go by and she said I, c I can do that <laughs> and you have the wonderful Loretta Rosemeyer whose husband uh, became ill and she was thinking like what can I do and she started someone showed her how she could dig trenches and now she employs thousands of employees thousands of employees so these these just these three women have contributed so much to this economy mm -hmm. um, and have created wonderful lives for many families. Great. I, I love those stories and I can really tell how proud of the work that uh, your organization does by the way you speak of it. So I, it makes me very happy to hear that enthusiasm. So I wanted to ask, is there anything that um, you haven't covered that you guys do in the organization that you wanted to make sure that you got out today? Well, the only thing I want to stress is people should go to um, communicate with us via social media, mm -hmm. go to our site. Uh, remember, we serve all members of our community. We mm -hmm. have three offices now. We have a staff of 40. Um, we are a nonprofit. We mm -hmm. do the best, best we can, um, but uh, we can help uh, someone that's in the idea phase or if they're trying to build capacity. And where are your three offices? Um, we have uh, an office in downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office in Aurora because gridlock is an issue sometimes. <laughs> uh, right. And we have an office in Minneapolis also. Oh, great. Okay. But remember that we provide, we work uh, in with many other community organizations like with Greater the Greater Anglewood CDC. Mm -hmm. And we provide, we work with Mujeres Latinas and Axion. Um, and we work with Axion too, mm -hmm. so we right. work with many, many uh, organizations throughout the city. Great. It's uh, uh, really God's work that you're doing, getting these women out there and giving them the tools that they need to be successful in businesses, because you're absolutely right. A lot of women go into the workforce but need more money for their families or flexibility in some cases uh, mm -hmm. is what they're looking for. So. 
Thank you so much for being here today. We really enjoyed your, your chat, the information that you shared with us. Uh, we will put your website out and make sure that uh, your social media handles are added to that so that um, you know, folks can look you up. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Amelia, for being here. Well, that wraps up our solution station, I'm sorry, webinar on our solution station. Thank you very much for joining us.